often talk about aero gains as free watts, although that's not quite true because actually you're just going faster for the same power rather than gaining more power. But anyway, a lot of people, if they can afford it, will buy a time trial specific bike for time trials or triathlon even, assuming that it will be faster, which it could be, but actually it's not just about the bike, it's more about your body position. And you can get a really good aero time trial position on your regular road bike with a time trial handlebar. In this case, we've got the Control Tech Time Zone Aero Bar. The reason for that is they asked us to use it in a video, and in this instance, its range and ease of adjustability makes it ideal for us to illustrate a time trial bike fit. For this video, I needed a volunteer because it's a bit too complicated for me to both talk and demo at the same time. So I need, well, a model cyclist. Simon, thanks for volunteering. That's all right. Not often I'm called a model cyclist. In fact, far nicer than anything Lloydie's ever said about me, so I'll take it. Well, anyway, I'm sorry this is going to be so boring for you because presumably you've had hundreds of time trial bike setups and done loads of time trials. Well, you say that, Emma. I have never, in all my years of racing bikes, had a time trial bike fit. So this is going to be very interesting indeed. You, but, but, but I mean, but you have done time trials, though. I mean, you didn't get through a whole pro cycling career without doing a time trial, surely? Yeah, no, I did five. Five? I did five of them, yeah. Uh, two of them were on a proper time trial bike, but never one that had ever been fitted to me. So. Wow. I this is incredible. I mean, it would have been even more fun, to be honest, if you were... Tell it like seven. I just remember two more. Seven. Still, you can count on two hands the number of time trials you've done. Yeah. Not a total beginner, so it won't be quite... Eight. Weak. Sorry, I just remembered another one. Tour of King High Lake Prologue. Sorry. Anyway, that's it now, I promise. There's still not very many, although, like I say, it would have been even more fun if you were a total beginner, because I wanted revenge for the cyclocross semi-humiliation, but, you know... <laughs> It would hurt an awful lot more falling off a time trial bike than a cyclocross bike, I think, Emma. So it's certainly not quite proper no, revenge. No, no. Okay. But anyway, I think this is going to be super interesting. And maybe we could even, you know, shave a few times off your local KOMs. If there's anything well, you were chasing. I'd be up for it. And yes, as it happens, I am indeed chasing it. Now, I know you're raring to hop on the bike and get training, Si. But before you do, let's just ask the fundamental question of what is the point of a time trial bike? Okay. It's a bike that's going to be faster than my road bike. Yes, riding on your own specifically. So there's a few key things. I think there's three key points about a time trial bike to consider. One is body position, one is the bike frame, and one is the handlebars. Okay. Right. I don't want to seem ungrateful, Emma, but this is very clearly your bike. And there's a bit of height difference between the two of us. So, I mean, it just looks a little bit small. Yes. And I grant you it may be a little on the small side, but the thing is, with a time trial bike, you are much better off going for a slightly smaller frame than a frame that's too big, because you have more degrees of movement. And the key thing about time trial position is to get low at the front. If the bike's too high at the front, and I'll be honest, for me, for a time trial, this frame, even though it's the smallest frame I could get, would be too high at the front for me to get a low aero position. Whereas for you, it might be a bit too low, but we can always go higher by putting a longer stem or a stem that slopes up. Okay. So you have more degrees of movement, and we can definitely get you low and aero. Sweet. Let's start then with body position, which, as I said, is the most important factor. This is where you will save the most drag. And the most important thing is to reduce your frontal area. So frontal area is your area as seen from the front on. Fairly straightforward, really. Yeah. So you need to get low. Okay. So when we're talking about fit then, is it going to be this position here where I'm going to be spending most of my time? This is the one we want to get dialed. Exactly, yeah. On the aero skis is the position you want to work for you. You're only really going to be on the brake hoods when you're braking or accelerating out of corners. And at that point, you're generally moving a lot slower or trying to slow down if you're braking. So you don't need to be so aero. Now, there are some time trial courses where that might be different, but generally, that's where you're going to be when you're going fast. Okay. So this is the position we want to work on. All right. And the most important thing, like I said, body position. And the most important part of your body position is your head position. It's very hard to tell for sure what's fastest without a wind tunnel test, but without a wind tunnel test, there is a rule of thumb, and that is to try and get your head in line with your back and your bum. So first of all, get your back in line with your bum, and then get your head in line with that. Lovely. So you're on a flat line from head to shoulders to bum. We're almost there. You could actually go a little bit lower at the front. Could I? <laughs> I've got a spacer under it. You do have spacers, yeah. Fantastic. So the point of getting low at the front is just to reduce your frontal area. That's not the only factor in your, the drag of your body. So there's also the coefficient of drag. So what actually is your coefficient of drag then? 
Well, the coefficient of drag is just a coefficient in the drag equation. It doesn't have any units as such. And it's hard to, I mean, it's not a physical thing, but the way you can think about it is about the smoothness of a shape. So often when we measure drag, we measure CDA. And that's what we talk about. And that has units of area. But CD is the coefficient of drag and A is your area. So we measure them together. But if you wanted to think about separating them out, your frontal area is fairly clear what that is. CD, well, it's about how smooth the shape of you is. So the more like a teardrop shape you are, the better. And also the smoother your surfaces are, the better. So that's why we get super high tech, funky time trial skin suits at the Olympics that people invest a lot of money into making them slightly lower drag. And that's why your position is about more than just your frontal area. So sometimes people find that they can get lower at the front and get a smaller frontal area, but they're not actually quicker in wind tunnel tests or on the road because it might have changed their shape such that their coefficient of drag has actually gone up. Okay, so actually you've got your, you know, the hole that you're punching through the wind, yep. but actually a lot of your drag, correct me if I'm wrong, is created from the turbulence at the back. Exactly, so your yeah. coefficient of drag is almost thinking about everything that happens past here exactly. backwards. Yeah. And that could be your skin suit where the, that's yeah. causing like micro turbulence exactly. and it could be, you know, my bum, which causes yeah. massive amounts of turbulence. I, I doubt it causes, I think it's going to be a very tiny amount of turbulence, but... You're too kind. So the second thing that we think about with a time trial bike is often having a time trial frame. And you can tell what an aero frame is by the way it looks. And it does save a few watts, but actually it's not that much compared to your body position. So we're going to leave that for the moment. We do have an Orbea Orca aero, but I think that's going to be far less important to you and your time trial gains than your head position. Lastly, handlebars. And we often think about the handlebars as being a way to get low in a time trial. And that is, of course, important. But the other thing about the aero bars, uh, it's not just getting narrow and low, it's also the fact that it's more comfortable for long periods pushing at a high wattage than holding yourself on the drops for most people, because you can essentially use fewer of your arm muscles, which leaves you with more energy for your leg muscles. So now we know what we're looking for. Let's get stuck into the nitty gritty details of sorting out an aero position. So first up is to get slammed, get low at the front, because that's the first thing we're gonna look for. So that's all about elbow height, because your elbow height defines your shoulder height, defines your back height, defines your head height. That looks actually pretty good. Yeah. It doesn't look super comfortable, but it doesn't have to be at this stage. Did it feel like you could pedal? It did, it felt like I could pedal. I, my puny little shoulders were starting to hurt a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they're that, they're that weak. Um, and I feel like I'm a little bit cramped. Yes, so you'd like to go, you'd like a bit more space at the front? I or? could go lower and I think I could hold on to something other than my gear shifters. So whilst we're adjusting the height of the bars and the reach on yep. the skis then, I mean, what about the angle? Because that changes, obviously, yep. as soon as you loosen the bolts. Good point. These bars have a huge amount of adjustability, which is great. Angle of the skis is mostly really about comfort and how you feel like you can put the power down. So some people find that changing the angle will help them to move their shoulder position and get more air into the lungs, give them more space to breathe, basically. But generally, most people go roughly horizontal uh, and it won't really change your frontal area and it probably won't change your drag that much. Changing your elbow position outwards, so the width of your elbows, that can make a bit of a difference. So we've got three, three bolt holes here. We could have actually gone quite a lot narrow with your elbows. However, there's normally not much point going a huge amount narrower than your hips because if you think about your shape from front on, if your elbows are in line with your hips, then that's one shape for the air to flow around. But again, that's the kind of detail that's really hard to measure without a wind tunnel. What your elbow width really does affect is your stability uh, in crosswinds. And I found, um, to, well, we found that um, I was actually slightly more aero with my elbows really close together in the wind tunnel, but I couldn't ride it on the road because the slightest gust of a crosswind and I felt like I was going to fall off. In fact, I probably almost did once. So, uh, so I stuck with slightly wider elbows just because I could be safer and put the power down without getting scared. Okay. So there we go. We've taken out this one centimeter shim, which has got you slightly lower at the front. Yep. We've also moved the aero skis forward, which gives you a bit more space in the chest region where you're pedaling. Uh, how does it feel? It, to me, it looks really good. So your back's really flat. And I think if you uh, wanted to keep your head low, you could. Yeah. It doesn't feel great on the neck, I admit, but 
Just for first impressions, how does it feel? Yeah, good. Like, it actually feels remarkably comfortable. A bit like, you know, you kind of adopt that position on your road bike where yeah. you're balancing on the bars. It's just, you've got so much, you know, control and, yeah. you know, you actually feel quite secure and you could really lean on it. So if we did want to go further forward, we have another stem, but we, okay. if you feel okay, then we'll probably leave that with the shorter stem for the moment. Yeah, I mean, I find it slightly weird that I'm riding a 47 with what, a 90 millimeter long stem? And, and you look pretty good. And I feel remarkably comfortable. So one thing that's worth noting here, while, while we're talking about elbow height, we've got you pretty low, and I think you look pretty good from a frontal area perspective. We're also th thinking about elbow position for aft. So I always used to time trial with my my upper arms roughly vertical okay. and if I went any further forward which in some cases was more aero when we did wind tunnel testing I felt very unstable because my arms were quite extended then and it felt like I was going to get blown around in the crosswind and now we'll come to head position which is absolutely crucial so of body position head position is the most important thing and how low you can keep your head is crucial so that's to do with uh, how long your neck is and how flexible how big your eyebrows are <laughs> yes I did notice actually that I can I, kind of, I can't really see because my eyebrows are getting in the way. Yes, and being able to see is really, really important. I can't stress this enough. It's one thing on a turbo, but safety is absolutely the most important thing out on the road. You, most, for most races, the roads are not closed. You need to be able to see where you're going. And no aero gain is as important as making sure you're safe. Yes, yeah, no, I consider sight to be of paramount importance yeah, when yeah. I'm cycling. So, uh, there's a way of getting ahead low and being able to see where you're going using a sort of S-bend in your neck. Uh, it, it's extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's horrible. Um, so, and you only need to look up just enough to be able to see. So I would find at the end of a really hard time trial, my eyeballs would hurt because I'd be looking up so hard through my eyebrows. This sounds fun, doesn't it? Yeah, I suppose, I suppose I'll suppose i have a visor on my aero helmet. So the fact that my forehead's gone all crinkly yeah. doesn't matter because yeah. yeah. that's actually not causing... Yeah. These wrinkles have not come from nowhere. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Right. Do you want to try it with an aero helmet? Yes, please. Perfect. Now, I know I keep going on and on about head position, but really it is the single most important factor in your aero position. I know because I've seen the numbers in the wind tunnel and just a, a centimetre can make a huge difference in your drag compared to everything else. Now that Simon's got the aero helmet on, we can see another point, which is if the EV looks down, for example, the point of the helmet sticks up. That is not optimal. Whereas if he looks up through his eyebrows in his carefully trained position, that keeps the point of the helmet down. The tail of the aero helmet effectively smooths the gap between his head and his back. And that's what we want to do. That's the point of the aero helmet. So there's no point wearing an aero, aero helmet if you don't keep the tip low at the back. And that's something that you should also go out and train. Uh, it's not particularly comfortable. It's not particularly fun. Nobody really likes wearing an aero helmet in training, but it is really important. I used to go out, for example, with a magnet stuck under my jersey there and a 10 piece stuck in the tail of my aero helmet and I'd have to click them together and ride around like that. Are you serious? Yep. It wasn't very fun. I, I'm starting to think time trialing isn't very fun, haven't this? <laughs> my eyeballs are hurting. Sorry. I thought there'd be different ones hurting, but no, it's my eyeballs. <laughs> Now, have you noticed, Sai, that because you're on my bicycle, you have 165 cranks on it? I have. I have noticed. Uh, not because of the way they feel, necessarily, because I haven't pressed on the pedals yet, but because with 165mm cranks, you've got quite a lot of the extra crank at the end that you're not actually <laughs> using, haven't you? Yeah. So I have. I hadn't, I hadn't realised. I've never ridden, I haven't ridden longer cranks for quite a long time. Now, this is a bit of a bodge because you're on my bike, but a lot of people do actually find that it's worth trying out a shorter crank for time trials. Um, because it keeps your knee lower at the top of your pedal stroke and so breathe. If, if, if at six foot one, so 185 centimetres, I'd be considering 165s, what would you consider then? A 155s? I've tried 155s. They didn't, didn't go so well for me, actually. Uh, I don't think I ever quite got the coordination, but, um, but I think I know lots of riders taller than me who've gone for 155s and riders my height who've gone for 150s. Yeah. Um, I think you could go longer, actually. Funnily enough, my first ever World Championships time trial, my, my team, who were fantastic, they, uh, they put my time trial to bike together for the World Championships and they put a longer crank on it, saying to me, uh, we've put a 175 crank on your bike, Emma, so that you get more power for the time <laughs> trial. And I was totally confused because I thought, well, well one, 
I'm, I'm pretty sure longer cranks don't give you more power. They give you more torque, it's not the same thing. And secondly, if they give you more power, why wouldn't you use them in a road race too? Because you want power also in a road race. So anyway, it's a myth that longer cranks yeah. have more power, they have more torque. But I think for, for time trialing, the key thing is being able to hold the position and pedal well. So if you need a shorter crank, don't be scared to try one. While we're down in the bottom bracket region, let's talk about Q-Factor, Simon. Not always discussed in bike fits, but it can make a significant difference for aero gains because basically Q-Factor is about how far apart your feet are. And when you think about the frontal area, that can make quite a big difference, especially as your feet are spinning around. So they're actually creating even more turbulence. Yeah. So you can reduce your Q-Factor by using cranks that have a smaller Q-Factor that are closer to the bike frame, uh, by using pedals with a shorter spindle, uh, you can move your cleats in, I guess. Exactly, yeah, you can also move your cleats in. That is the simplest way of doing it. However, you don't want to end up with your shoe rubbing on the crank because that is generally a poor way to transfer power to the bike. There's also presumably a knock-on effect on your, your actual bike fit from a comfort perspective because Q-Factor has a real bearing on knee pain, doesn't it? Because of your IT band and... Huge. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people go as aero as they can in terms of narrowness of Q-Factor and then find they get knee pain, hip pain, and you have to be very careful with these things. Tiny adjustments around pedals and cleats can make quite a big difference to how you feel. So, so you could basically, for one big event, massively reduce your Q-Factor and then not walk for a couple of months afterwards? You could do. I, I wouldn't take that risk personally. I think your health's more important. <laughs> well, I think you're looking pretty darn good there, Sai. Uh, how does it feel? Well, I'm, I'm quite positive about how much power it feels like I could put out in this position, so that's good. But I'm not going to lie, even in this short period of time, my shoulders are giving me a bit of jip, my eyeballs are definitely giving me a bit of jip, probably my neck as well. So I think I need to spend quite a bit of time in this position actually just getting used to it. Well, Emma, thank you very much for taking this to a bike fit. To be fair, I am genuinely quite motivated to do some time trying now, partly because you feel me with confidence, you say my position looks all right, and partly because I'm still relatively competitive and it seems like another... I think to do. you would absolutely nail it. And <laughs> I mean, I really want to see you do a time trial just so you can smash everyone. I think this is a, this is a GCN video in the making. Well, there we go. Watch this space yeah. whilst I train definitely. Also, I mean, you could take a good 10 minutes off your commute, I reckon. Well, that's even more appealing, isn't it? Actually? More time in bed. Nice. And wouldn't I look darn cool as well on a low pro bike going to work? So cool. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much, Emma. Please give this video a big thumbs up. That's some serious insight there. Uh, and also, if you are going to want to do some of those core exercises, Emma, you took us through that. Yep. And we have a video on that very subject.